Yeah, pause on YouTube. How's it going, everybody? Got for you guys today, the fifth week of the Valhalla Pokemon League. Now, don't worry, guys. This is a Wi-Fi battle. Um, it's not live, even though I'm pretty sure, like, the team building video along with the Wi-Fi battle itself is going to be, like, 40 minutes long, probably, or more. This battle on Wi-Fi took 59 minutes, and it was 87 turns. And it would have gone longer if it was done on Wi-Fi, but it was a really, 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 really good game. And this game, like this game actually had me really wanting to try to get back into doing more Wi-Fi battles. So if I do have the extra time for future VPL battles, uh, future Valhalla Pokemon League battles, I will try to do Wi-Fi as opposed to Showdown. So yeah, for those of you who do like Wi-Fi, be on the lookout for that. But like I said, this is a really, really long game. Uh, part of it is kind of my fault, but a really, really, really good game. Back and forth, and we are actually currently number two in the Valhalla Pokemon League, and we are taking on the number one team in the league by differential of three. Uh, the Charlotte Beedrills, coached by Tesla Mouse. He is going to be doing a live version of this battle on his side. Uh, so I'll leave his channel link and stuff down in the description. So check him out if you want to see what he thought of, of during the match. So I haven't watched it yet, so I don't know what he may have thought. But yeah, uh, just check him out if you, wanna, if you want to. So this is a pretty interesting matchup because, as you can see, uh, my opponent does have a Mega Metagross. Now this is the six Pokemon that I think my opponent is gonna want to bring. Now uh, if you haven't noticed there's a little timestamp on your screen. Uh, please don't skip anything. I do advise you guys to watch the team building um, little intro real quickly but if you don't then I completely understand. Uh, you can go ahead and skip straight to the battle uh, if you really want to. So. Yeah, anyways, this is what I think he's going to want to bring. This or uh, probably Excavalier. I could see him maybe wanting to bring Assault Vest, Excavalier. Uh, Assault Vest, Electros could be a bit of a nuisance to my team just because I don't really have a comfortable switch in to its coverage move. So I really got to watch out for that. Uh, Togekiss is something that I was a little bit iffy on if he would bring or not. So I'm not too sure about it. Uh, but if he does want to bring it, then I'm hoping that he'll be fearing that I'll want to bring Registeel and maybe not bring it. But even if he does bring it, uh, we should be able to wear it down and um, beat it 1v1 eventually. So as you can see here, we do have Sub Seed Shaman. Now this EV spread is specific. Uh, we are able to outspeed max speed. Um, what are we able to outspeed? We're able to outspeed max speed something. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, we're able to outspeed Max Speed Jolly Embor if for some reason he wants to bring it. We're able to outspeed that by one point so we can potentially get up sub or maybe pick it off with Seed Flare. Because Seed Flare, believe it or not, even though it's resisted, can still do a decent amount of damage. So if he's not a Scarf variant, if for some reason he does want to bring Embor, we can outspeed it. Uh, if he wants to bring Togekiss, I really don't think he will be bringing an offensive variant, so I'm not too concerned about running a, enough speed to outspeed that. But we can run a modest nature, which means we are going to be doing a solid amount of damage to anything he wants to bring. And if we are able to get to the death drops on the Umbreon, if he does decide to bring that, which I'm pretty sure he should bring, just because Umbreon is really his only Mon that deals with... Uh, Greninja here, which will hopefully be able to get up uh, at least one layer of spikes and maybe burn something or if not get some damage off on the Togekiss so we can uh, beat it easier. Uh, Mega Metagross is a giant, giant threat. Uh, the good thing is though, we have two very solid Intimidate Mons in Lantonio and Wolfie here. Uh, the funny thing is that I literally need to go max HP, max defense, so Earthquake Mega Metagross, even after Intimidate, does not have a, uh, I think it only has like a 5% chance to 2 hit KO Arcanine um, after Rock. So if I had gone 248 defense or 248 HP, I think it goes from like 8% to 58 percent so that's just kind of funny and crazy at the same time so between uh, arcanine and landorus if he does have earthquake and ice punch that could be very scary 
Uh, the good thing is though that he should not be able to touch Slow King in that case. Um, if he does have the Thunder Punch, he can maybe not have Zen Headbutt. Uh, I could see him not running Zen Headbutt uh, just to have enough coverage to be able to hit our team. So uh, if that is the case, this could be a very, very uh, scary Mon. Uh, even scarier to deal with considering that we are taking on the number one player in the league. So definitely got to watch out for that. Rotom, I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a standard defensive variant because uh, outside of that, it doesn't really have any other kind of set it should run. Um, I guess it could be a little bit specially defensive. Uh, maybe Assault Vest, but I think him losing Leftovers and Willow is, uh, is something he's not going to want to risk. So I'm not too concerned about that. But the main reason why I am running a Spadef Nature on the Sloking is so uh, we can take those Volts, which is from Rotom, a little bit better. Plus, this doesn't really change any uh, damage draw outputs from this Mega Metagross. If it does have the uh, Thunder Punch, it can still 2 KO Sloking, uh, regardless if we're max defense, max HP, bold nature. And uh, the Tangle Barrier, of course, is for the Excavalier, so we can chew a Mega Horn. If he's banded, uh, I think we do have a chance to live if he doesn't get a high roll, and then we can uh, blast him with a Fire Blast. But if he's not banded or just regular Assault Vest, a Fire Blast still does a huge amount of damage. And uh, of course, we have good old, oh my lord, I love, 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 love Mega Lopunny. Oh my lord, this thing has become like one of my new favorite mods because it's just an absolute beast. So the main reason why I'm running Drain Punch over High Jump Kick is not only because of Substitute, uh, it's also because I feel like he would be the type of guy to maybe want to one, one on one want to run pursue uh, not pursuit but want to run protect on certain mons uh so let's say he had rotom here he could have protect instead of pain split uh for some reason that was something in my mind that i was really scared of uh plus i actually i really really like fake out substitute uh mega low punny. this actually really comes into play uh, during the match um as you guys will see but he could very well have protect um Rotom just to be able to catch a high jump kick off catch a high jump kick um, Catch me off guard with the high jump kick uh, And and we miss or catch. I don't know how to English. Oh my lord Catch me off guard and protect as I high jump kick high jump kick. I need to go to sleep. <laughs> it's pretty late when I'm recording this, but uh, regardless, you guys get what I'm trying to say. He could have protect on this. Uh, if he brings Excavalier, he could have protect on that. Obviously, he will have protect on Umbreon. Uh, maybe protect Mega Metagross. I don't know. I highly doubt that. Uh, Greninja uh, will hopefully be able to get up a layer of spikes. Uh, if not, then we can at least chip away at the Toga Kiss. Uh, but yeah, guys, that is pretty much the quick run through of the matchup like i said this was a very very good match so with that being said i'm gonna get into the team preview of this match so as you can see on your screen uh there is a little timestamp for you guys to know when the battle starts but i would appreciate it if you guys did uh just listen to me talking about the team matchup real quickly uh before the match starts and yeah if you guys may have not seen the team building process then i do hope you guys enjoyed this very lengthy 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 battle that was really 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 good and i'm really excited to narrate this for you guys it is my week 5 epl match so as you can see from my opponent tesla mouse uh he pretty much brought everything that i thought he would bring except uh, i thought that maybe he would have excavalier over haxorus now i'm gonna try something a little bit different with this wi-fi battle and uh, i really want you guys to comment down below and let me know if you like it uh this way you guys can kind of keep up with uh, what's KO'd and not because I know that's kind of hard to keep up with uh, during Wi-Fi battles without a proper layout But yeah going into this battle Obviously uh, Mega Metagross could be a huge issue depending on if it has uh, Bolt beam coverage with Thunderbolt and Ice Punch and then what depending on what its final two moves if it has Earthquake and Meteor Mash could be very very hard to uh, deal with Togekiss depending on what kind of set it is uh, hopefully I won't be defog if it's not defog that would actually be really really great because that means my hazards will be here to stay for the whole match Haxorus honestly shouldn't be an issue so long as I have Arcanine and 
uh, landers to pivot in between to be able to uh, intimidate it and make sure it doesn't do too much damage to me. Electros uh, could be a little bit hard to switch into just because I don't exactly have a dedicated switch into it. So uh, definitely gonna have to watch out for that. Umbreon should literally not be doing anything to my team unless he has Toxic, in which case that could be slightly annoying. So I gotta watch out for that. Then Rotom Wash, I'm pretty sure it's just gonna be defensive and not be like a Scarf variant or something along those lines because I don't really think that that would fit um, fit in this match against me. But uh, as you can see from my team, uh, obviously I talked about my team. So my main thing going into this match is to hopefully get up hazards with Landers and Greninja and uh, just wear down his team and eventually beat it, uh, obviously. Uh, Sub Seed Shaman is actually going to come in handy uh, throughout this whole match and Sub Seed Shaman is a huge, huge threat to my opponent seeing as he doesn't have a, a grass type so if I'm able to get behind a substitute and a leech seed on this togekiss I will be able to beat it uh, relatively easily so on the off chance that he did want to lead with the Rotom I am gonna decide to lead off with my low punny as he does end up leading off with the Rotom wash which is perfectly fine because now what I can do is just go ahead and mega evolve and uh, go straight for the fake out gauging to see how much damage it will do to this Rotom so since I am adamant max attack fake out is going to be doing a solid 20% to him which does reveal to me that he is defensive not only that but he does have the leftovers so the downside to this is that even though yes I do have the substitute he literally has no reason to not just go for the volt switch so I am going to be forced to switch out into my shaman Obviously knowing that he will go for the Volt Switch and he can pretty much freely bring in his Togekiss or his uh, Mega Metagross or even his Haxorus as he chooses to bring in uh, the Mega Metagross. Now if I was Timid Max Speed Shaman, I think I would have actually been able to outspeed this uh, Metagross before he uh, got the speed boost from Mega Evolving. But instead, I make the safe switch into my Shaman because Shaman, uh, not my Shaman, but I make the safe switch into my uh, Slowking because Shaman is actually a modest nature, more of a, a bulky variant uh, with enough speed to outspeed um, max speed Jolly Embor, if I'm not mistaken. So I can get a free switch into Slowking and scouting out to see if he would potentially Thunder Punch here, I do believe I end up switching into either my Arcanine or my Landorus, most likely my Arcanine just uh, because he could have gone for uh, another Ice Punch potentially, or even if he had gone for uh, Zen Heba predicting me to switch for whatever reason, Arcanine could have then just gone for the Morning Sun. So after getting the Intimidate off on this Umbreon, I really don't want to mess around with Toxic, so I hard switch directly into my Shaman. Now, there is absolutely no way that this Umbreon can break the substitute of my Shaman. I specifically EV'd Shaman to be able to not have it sub broken by Umbreon which I was 99% sure he would want to bring Umbreon just because it's his only real answer to my Greninja and because he did bring an Umbreon I can now uh, basically lead seed and substitute on that Umbreon and beat it 1v1 or just be behind the substitute on whatever he switches in or be behind a sub and have it leech seeded so that's actually really really great as he switches into the Togekiss I am going to be forced to switch out here he is just going to decide to be aggressive and go straight for the Air Slash now unfortunately he does not have the Excavalier which means my uh, Slowking is pretty much itemless throughout this whole battle because I have the Tanga Berry in hopes that he would try to Mega Horn Slowking and then I could live and then uh, bop him with the Fire Blast so if I was Calm Mind Slowking Calm Mind Slowking actually would have been able to just win me the match if um, I did not get Paraflint to death by this Togekiss. So predicting the T-Wave this turn, or even if he went for another Air Slash, it's not going to do too much damage to Landorus. Plus, he is still Leech Seeded, so I can comfortably switch in to this Togekiss with Landorus, knowing that I'm not going to take too much damage from an Air Slash if he does decide to go for it. As it reveals the Thunder Wave, I am going to take this opportunity to get at my rocks and I make a bit of a risky play and I actually end up staying in on this Rotom and going for the U-turn. Now the reason why that could have been a risky play is because he could have had enough speed to outspeed um, my Landorus, which I think this Landorus was running a bit of speed creep already, although I don't think it was running a too much to the point where it would outspeed uh, some speed creep Rotom. But 
Regardless, my opponent makes an excellent play, knows I will not want to stay in and Volt Switches on my U-turn as he Volt Switches into Togekiss. And at this point I'm thinking, okay, Togekiss really shouldn't be too big of an issue. I have rocks up, I can basically beat this 1v1. So what I'm going to do here is actually go for the substitute, hoping that he would Thunder Wave, uh, predicting me to switch out, but no, he goes for the defog and this is where I was like oh okay this this is slightly problematic this is slightly problematic so I'm gonna go straight for the lead seed here because basically what I need to do is put myself in a position where I can just beat him. so I'm able to get behind the substitute as he breaks it with the air slash and I'm still in a pretty good scenario to where I can honestly just stay in here and just uh, consistently substitute and eventually he'll either uh, get annoyed to where he misplays or I'll be in a position where I'll be behind a sub he'll be elite seated and I can then just start being aggressive with seed flare so he's gonna decide to hard switch directly into his electros here as I do just substitute again and I was thinking about maybe going for another lead seed there, but that would have been way too risky if he did want to stay in and go for the air slash. As I do lead seed here, and the reason why I decided to lead seed instead of going for the seed flare, even though, yes, I am modest, I'm not max special attack, and unless I had got the uh, spadef drop with seed flare, I wouldn't have been able to 2 a KO this Electra. So he would have been able to break my substitute here and still be around uh, 45 to 50% HP. But because I did go for the Leech Seed, I can now either switch out or stay in and I make the very dumb play of uh, switching directly into my Arcanine and in the back of my mind I was screaming, Substitute! Substitute! You have no reason to bring in Arcanine! Like it doesn't matter if he goes for the Flamethrower, you just substitute and of course he makes the good play of going for the Volt Switch on my switch into Arcanine and this is actually kind of good because as you're about to see in comes this Haxorus so the fact that I actually did not stay in here and I switched into my Arcanine means that this Haxorus can no longer uh, freely set up and as you're about to find out he is going to be a substitute Dragon Dance variant of Haxorus now Haxorus was something I felt that I didn't really prepare that well for but I knew that Along with Arcanine and Landorus here, any variant of Haxorus should be relatively easy for me to deal with. So he does end up substituting and then going for a Dragon Dance because I was able to get the Intimidate off with Landorus. He is at a neutral attack stat, which means uh, this Dragon Claw that he's about to go for is not going to be doing too much damage to me. Uh, if he had Outrage, that actually could have been a little bit terrifying. Uh, luckily though he does turn out to have the Dragon Claw which as you can see there I will be able to easily take another one uh, even two potentially after leftovers so after I go for the Earthquake I thought that maybe he would want to switch out into his Rotom just wanting to uh, try and save this Haxorus for Death Fodder but no he's actually going to make uh, a pretty aggressive play and just stay in here trying to wear down Landers as much as possible knowing that as long as I have Landers and Arcanine around that Mega Metagross is really not going to be doing anything at all uh, throughout this whole match, especially if he does not have Thunder Punch, which I don't, I don't think I ever find out what his final move is throughout this whole uh, battle. So he is going to be able to Dragon Claw me here as I go for the rocks, predicting him to want to switch out. He does bring me down very, very low, but I do have a secret move on this uh, lander, so. Even though Landers is pretty low on HP, I really wasn't too concerned here. I was more happy to get rid of Haxorus than to have to deal with Haxorus, than have to deal with Haxorus and Mega Metagross. Now, I only have to deal with Mega Metagross instead of both, so that's really good. As he does bring in this giant threat, I cannot stay in, but I can safely switch into uh, Samson here, which he reveals to have the Iron Head. Um, I understand that he has Thunder Wave on Togekiss. I'm guessing that's why he has Iron Head on uh, Mega Metagross. Regardless though, I'm gonna make a pretty uh, ballsy double switch into my Mega Lopunny here, knowing that if he did Thunder Punch me, he's not gonna be able to knock me out. 
I'm pretty sure he's not going to have the bullet punch um, either way. And he can't afford to leave in Mega Metagross on Slowking regardless because I can either burn him with Scald or I can Thunder Wave him. So predicting him to switch into either the Umbreon, Rotom, or the Electros, I double into Mega Lopunny and Fake Out plus Return will be able to knock that out as he brings back in this uh, Mega Metagross. Obviously I cannot stay in here because I do not have the high jump kick and I cannot knock out Mega Metagross at the amount of speed that he is at. So again, I'm going to be forced into my Slow King and he knows this, so he's actually going to pull a very nice double switch into the Togekiss. And again, this Togekiss... <laughs> I honestly did not think Togekiss was going to be such a huge, huge nuisance for me. But you're going to see that this thing is literally the bane of my entire existence. If I had just brought Registeel, this thing wouldn't have been um, as big of a problem potentially. So I'm able to T-Wave the Togekiss as I hard switch directly into my Landers. I mainly did this just for death fodder because I could then get a free switch into my Greninja to be able to taunt him and then go from there. And this next minute is going to be sped up as much as possible because this is kind of a reason why this game went to timer. Uh, it's me being stubborn and switching in and out with Landorus in Togekiss and trying to get myself in a position where I can have Landorus at a decent amount of HP and I can get a free switch into Greninja to hopefully taunt this Togekiss. So I'm going to be switching in and out. Uh, he ends up getting paralyzed a couple times and then I keep protecting like every other turn if I'm not mistaken and then I try to get up rocks. Uh, again, to get him in a position where he's not going to go for the Air Slash and he's not going to go for the Thunder Wave. So I go for Protect, go for the U-Turn, and then I'm going to be able to bring in uh, Slow King. And because Slow King is already paralyzed and rocks are up, I'm very positive that he's not going to Air Slash or T-Wave this turn. And he is going to go for the Defog, so I can get that free switch into my Greninja. And now, hopefully, uh, if he wants to stay in, I can taunt him stop him from wanting to do any setup and then as he switches out I can maybe get up a layer of spikes to still try to wear down that Mega Metagross and this Umbreon because Mega Metagross unfortunately I have Drain Punch on my Mega Low Punny and not High Jump Kick because I was fearing him maybe wanting to run a couple Mons with Protect so I need to really wear down Mega Metagross any way I can whether it be with chip damage or with entry hazard damage so I can beat it easier so I get a flinch with the Dark Pulse, it doesn't really matter as he's going to crit me back with the Foul Play which also does not matter. And I was hoping to be able to keep up this uh, layer of spikes throughout this whole match. Just like I said because I really want to wear down uh, Mega Metagross. Even getting one switch into Mega Metagross on spikes would be absolutely amazing. So here expecting him to want to go for another Foul Play, I decided to hard switch directly into my Shaman as again, he cannot break my substitute with Foul Play but he doesn't know this yet. This is the main reason I haven't substituted yet with Shaman on this Umbreon because I want to be able to Leech Seed first uh, whatever he potentially switches into instead of being behind a substitute on whatever he brings in and then me having to waste a turn going for Leech Seed. So he is going to foul play as unfortunately I missed my Leech Seed there. Uh, I doubt that really matters because I'm going to be able to hit this one as it reveals to have the Heal Bell. So he's got Heal Bell, foul play and his final two moves are most likely a wish and protect or I guess maybe moonlight and baton pass could be an option as well uh, regardless though it's not gonna be too hard to beat this Umbreon 1v1 I decide to be aggressive here and instead of going for the substitute which I guess in hindsight maybe I should have done uh, I go for the seed flare just trying to see how much damage I will do to this Umbreon and it actually does a relatively a uh, good amount in about like 30-35% as he does foul play and then I end up making a very very terrible terrible misplay here because all he's been doing is spamming foul play I'm thinking okay he's just gonna foul play again right or he's gonna go for the wish so what I can do here is get a free switch into low punny and get behind the substitute and just be a humongous threat for him to deal with but he doubles into the togekiss and if I had just substituted, I could have leech seeded here and maybe got myself in a scenario where 
I could have pivoted with Landorus and Shaman, and uh, not Shaman, but Landorus and Slowking again, and just uh, at the same time worn down this Togekiss. As he crits my incoming Landorus, that's fine. Uh, at the time it was a little bit annoying, but game changing, not really. I still have Arcanine plus Slowking to be able to take on that Mega Metagross. So as long as I have both of those, um, Mega Metagross is literally not doing anything in this match. So I get a free switch back into my Greninja, thinking that he would expect me to taunt. I end up going for the Scald as he ends up going for the T-Wave. He did take a while to make this play, and I knew as soon as he made his play, I was like, crap, he went for the Thunder Wave and he didn't switch out and sure enough that is what happens even though I will be able to live this Air Slash I'm gonna get flinched <laughs> which which does kind of suck because after uh, two turns of leftovers he is unfortunate he is unfortunately not able to get knocked out by fake out plus return coming from Adam at Mega Lopun so Basically, at this point in the match, I need to find some way to beat this Togekiss. Like, I'm literally in a scenario where I have to bring in Shaman and Leech Seed. Like, this Togekiss could single-handedly beat the remainder of my team. And I need to find a way to make sure that doesn't happen. So, I find out that he is, for sure, a defensive Togekiss here because if he was running special attack investment he would have been able to knock me out with that air slash as I'm able to get off the leech seed I can now kind of substitute not only wear him down with leech seed but I can also stall out um, air slashes and as soon as he loses air slashes he won't be able to beat my shaman 1v1 now my final move on the shaman is hidden power fire which originally was hidden power ice but I changed it up because I thought that he would want to bring the um, Excavalier, but as you can see here, if I had Hidden Power Ice, it would have maybe come in a little bit more handy. As he's going to hard switch here directly into his Mega Metagross. This was actually a very good play on his part, because by hard switching into Mega Metagross, I'm in a scenario where unless I get this Badef drop, I pretty much have to Leech Seed. Um, Hidden Power Fire, I don't think 2 KOs him at this range, and even if it did 2 KO him, I don't outspeed him. So what I need to do is just try to get as much HP back to my Shaman as I possibly can. As he ends up breaking my substitute with the Ice Punch, and that's fine. All I want to do here is just go for the Leech Seed. There was no reason for me to go for Substitute or go for the Hidden Power Fire. As I said, I'm not going to 2 KO him. I'd rather have Shaman at higher HP to last me throughout this battle because I know I have two dedicated um, counters to this Mega Metagross in Arcanine and Slowking. So here, he's gonna make a very good double switch into the Togekiss knowing that I'm not gonna leave Shaman in and most likely heart switch into Arcanine or Slowking. And this is actually why I brought in Arcanine as opposed to Slowking because I still don't know the final move on this Mega Metagross so he could have easily Thunder Punched here uh, predicting me to want to bring in Slow King. Luckily though, that wasn't the case. As I bring in Arcanine, I am going to be forced to go for the Will-O-Wisp here. Uh, I was going to go for Flare Blitz, but then I thought about it. He most likely is just going to Thunder Wave me, so it's better for me to Willow first than to go for Flare Blitz than try to mess around with Paralysis and hit a Will-O-Wisp. And like I said, I need to find a way to beat this Togekiss. Togekiss is still at this point a humongous humongous issue for my team so basically my game plan right now is to get this togekiss in about 60 to 65 percent hp because in that range along with the burn i can bring in mega low Pony, fake out and then knock him out with return and then at that point his only way of stopping my mega low Pony is pretty much gone and as long as he doesn't have thunder punch on the Mega Metagross, I still have Slowking to 100% wall that Mega Metagross, which I will be able to wear down accordingly. So, unfortunately, I make the proper prediction, and I go for the Flare Blitz, and of course, I get fully paralyzed. Um, that actually was a little bit annoying, because now we're back to this scenario where I have to uh, go for the Extreme Speed, knowing that I can live one Air Slash, and if I'm able to get off the Flare Blitz damage after that, because he's going to be forced to go for Roost, I can um, hopefully 
put him in range to where I can then bring in low punny and beat him. So he's going to switch into the Rotom on my extreme speed. Getting off chip damage on this Rotom is also very well. Um, of course, I cannot stay in. He knows I'm going to want to switch out here. So I'm going to have to make the obvious switch into Shaman as he gets a crit with this Volt Switch. Now this crit actually did matter. This crit actually ends up playing a bit of a role as you're about to find out. So he's going to Volt Switch back into his Togekiss. I'm perfectly fine with this. Uh, this just means that I can wear him down with burn damage uh, even easier and I was actually really really thinking about just stacking off shaman here to this togekiss so what I'm gonna do is just substitute uh, let him go for air slash or maybe try and over predict if for some reason he thinks I'm gonna switch uh, there's also the chance he could miss the air slash he doesn't miss and I'm thinking all right I can go for another substitute here and stall out one more air slash then go for the seed flare and then seed flare plus burn damage should put this uh, this Togekiss in range of Mega Low Pony. But no, I am 2 HP off of being able to make a substitute. But thankfully, he over predicts in Thunder Waves. And you guys don't know how huge, how huge that really was. So, I'm going to switch out here back into Samson because the burn damage is starting to put this Togekiss in range of where he needs to go for the roost if I go on the offensive. So that's why I switch into my Slow King here. But he ends up going for another Air Slash. Misses, but I get fully paralyzed as I try to go for the Scald. And <laughs> that was so annoying because now... Uh, he can freely go for a roost here, or he can try to air slash me again. I think that he should have gone for the roost, but him air slashing here uh, isn't too bad of a play. Uh, either way though, he's still in a position where he pretty much has to go for the roost here. He can't mess around with trying to flinch me down, he has to go for the roost. But, he actually ends up uh, switching into his Rotom, as I actually switched into my Shaman as death fodder because if he had gone for the air slash I could have brought in low punny and uh, potentially won the battle from there after I got off a little bit more damage on this Rotom luckily because he brought in Rotom wash on my switch into shaman I can pretty much just go for the seed flare or I can go for the substitute or even go for the um, Leech Seed if I really wanted to. Hidden Power of Fire did cross my mind, but I still don't think that at the HP that he's at, I could knock him out. So instead, I go for the Substitute just to be able to uh, Leech Seed this Mega Metagross and just start wearing it down slowly and accordingly. And I think at this point in the match, there was like 10 minutes left, and you can see that it's still a 4v4. But my plan to win is still in motion. As long as I keep my plan in motion to win, then I should be able to win, obviously, because he really can't break through my team unless I really, really mess up or I really misplay. And because I didn't do this battle live, I, I was able to focus a little bit more. So he is going to make the same play that he did earlier, knowing that I wouldn't risk leaving in Shaman. I'm going to be forced out into my Arcanine as he doubles into the Togekiss. And this is where... um. I was really, really close to going for the Moonlight, but I looked down at the timer and I was like, you know what, I need to stop stalling around at this point, I gotta be aggressive. So I decided to go for the Flare Blitz, as he actually does end up going for the Roost. Luckily, I don't end up getting fully paralyzed, and Flare Blitz does do a pretty solid 20-25% uh, along with the Burn. That's 12% uh, unless you take away 6% from Leftover, so regardless, I did like 30% to this Togekiss. So all I need to do is extreme speed the following turn as he air slashes and then I can either flare blitz again on his roost and put myself in the same scenario and as long as that keeps going I'll either be able to put him in range of Mega Low Punny or he'll end up misplaying. As he ends up going for the air slash there his best move to go for right here is to go for the roost. Because he knows that this Togekiss is the only thing stopping my Mega Lopunny from running shop on his team. But he misplays, goes for the Air Slash, doesn't roost, 
knocks out my Arcanine. I did an E-Speed because I wanted to Flare Blitz him on his Roost. Now, he mentioned something about uh, being a good sport, um, uh, being too sportsmanlike, and I don't know if this is what he meant by that, but if we had done this game on Showdown like I had originally wanted to, then we wouldn't have had to come down to timer because I think right here we had like five minutes left. So I can bring in Mega Lopunny, I can fake out this uh, Togekiss, and then just click return and get a KO. I didn't want to reveal to him that I had Drain Punch, I had no reason to substitute, return was by far the best play for me to make. And finally, finally down goes the Togekiss, oh my lord. Why Togekiss, why were you so annoying? <laughs> So, the fact that I have Substitute is actually really, really good here because I'm not forced to switch out and I was very positive that he wouldn't go for will and he wouldn't go for Hydro Pump. So, he's basically forced to Bolt Switch into either his Umbreon or his Mega Metagross. Now, unfortunately, Mega Metagross is not in range of Drain Punch's role being in my favor. So, what I'm going to do here is just switch back into my Slow King to hopefully be able to go for a Scald. So he has Iron Head, Bullet Punch, and Ice Punch are the three moves I seen him go for. I still don't know what his last move is, but because he bullet punched my Mega Low Punny, I'm pretty positive that even if he beats my Slow King here 1v1, he's just gonna bullet punch me again. Although after fake out damage when I bring back in Mega Low Punny, I should be able to knock him out with Drain Punch. Uh, the fact that I wasn't able to get off this Skull damage does kinda suck, but <clears throat> it's not really game changing at all in the long run of the match. It would have made me feel a lot more comfortable though because after this fake out I think he's still in roll he's still in range of where if I get a low damage roll from Drain Punch he could just barely live luckily though he doesn't and I'm able to knock him out and at this point the combination of Low Punny and Shaman should be able to win me the match so in comes the Rotom I was actually very very close to staying in or uh, even going for substitute if I'm not mistaken luckily though I did make the safe switch into my shaman as he goes for the hydro pump obviously I will be able to eat this hit and then I can go ahead and either leech seed or seed flurry here obviously I'm not at an FHP to where I can make a substitute I did think about pulling a double switch into the low punny here which I think is what I should have done because him not staying in was very, very obvious. Regardless though, if I can get a Spadef drop on the incoming um, Umbreon, I should be able to beat him. As Seed Flare looks like it should be able to 2 a KO him. Because at this point in the match, there was actually like 2 minutes left. Uh, if you see the live version from him, I think there was 2 minutes left on this um, battle. And instead of going for the Protect and potentially being able to take a Seed Flare, He's actually just going to go ahead and sack off Umbreon, allow me to knock him out. Uh, regardless, I think if I had got a high damage roll with Seed Flare, even after Protect, I would have been able to finish him off. But because I don't want to risk missing Seed Flare, I'm actually going to go for Leech Seed. Because if I, had <clears throat> if I had gone for Leech Seed and then missed Seed Flare, I can then bring in Mega Lopunny and fake out plus... Leech Seed will wear him down along with me substituting and put him in range of return being able to knock him out. Luckily though, I'm not going to miss my Seed Flare and Shaman is going to be able to knock out this Rotom and that is going to be the 2-0 victory in the Durham Dredagon's favor. So I think, I hold on, Ooh, I needed water after that. Man, that was an insane, an insane battle. Like I said, this game was like 59 minutes long, guys. And it's just, it was a really good game. Good game, Tesla. Uh, he played a very good match. Uh, I offered to do this on Wi-Fi next time. Not on Wi-Fi, but I offered him to let's play on Showdown next time if uh, we do play each other so we don't have to go to timer. And, um, yeah, anyways, hopefully you guys did enjoy this insane, insane match. And if you did, make sure to hit the like button down below. With that being said, I will hopefully see you all tomorrow. And uh, thank you all for watching. Later, everybody.